my check, my check, my check. Friend, welcome, welcome. Thanks for the comment. Gonna wait. <clears throat> Gonna wait for some more people to jump in here. Um, waiting for um, going over certain emails today. So I want to make sure that those people are in here to be able to get the information and able for me to ask them questions and things like that. So. Let's see, let's see. Just gonna wait a little bit, get a couple more people in here. Wait a minute and start. Going over some emails and questions. Say welcome everyone. If you're joining, please uh, feel free to leave a comment and say what's up before I get started here, which will be just in a few minutes. I have cat hair on my microphone. So just enjoy the picture and some good music. Remember, if you're joining us, please say what's up in the chat. That way I know uh, who's here. started here in a couple, uh, probably a minute or two. So, get welcome. Dustin, welcome all. Actually, <clears throat> let me go ahead and get started. I have uh, Dustin and Sydney here, and um, they wrote me an email. Fred, what's going on? They sent an email about uh, their lawn. They made kind of a mistake in their lawn, and uh, they need help bringing it back. So, we are here to do that. Uh, just a quick overview of today. I have two I have two main things I'm going to be going over. Um, this is more about tools and equipment um, in the yard. So uh, this will be after I go over uh, Cindy and Dustin's email. Um, but so today we're going to be kind of going over how to recover your lawn um, from maybe dethatching it, cutting it too short, something like that. And the next one will be kind of tools and things for a homeowner to use. So we have two great emails, two great questions. Um, but let's get right into the first one. And now this is from Cindy and Dustin here. Hi Chad, I have St. Augustine grass and cut it about two inches then dethatched it. It's not good. Um, our lawn hasn't done well and I thought uh, this would help before applying a pre-emergent and fertilize for spring. 
Um, so Sydney and Dustin, right away, I can let you know, uh, do not do a pre-emergent. Um, you are going to need to wait on a pre-emergent until the lawn fully recovers um, because that can really slow down the lawn filling back in. Um, so don't even worry about a pre-emergent. You're just going to have to be, unfortunately, reactive to weeds, uh, which is possible and is doable, but that's going to be the best thing for this situation. But, however, I found your YouTube channel and advice to never dethatch. Um, I've seen lawns have survived from dethatching. I just don't recommend it because the amount of stress and damage you do to your lawn does not outweigh the upside. But it is something you can do and your lawn can possibly recover, um, but usually it's not worth dethatching. Um, and so I'm sorry to hear you didn't find my videos before. Uh, I need your advice on what to do now. The dead grass clippings are bagged uh, and we could spread them out if needed. I'm, uh, I'm not sure uh, if we should aerate or not. There's a bare compacted dirt spot by our basketball hoop that needs aeration to get the grass to grow. But the rest of the lawn is springy when we walk on it. Uh, with it so thin, thin after dethatching, should we aerate and if so, everywhere or only compacted spots? Now, um, we're going to go over the pictures which will give us a better analysis of what's really going on here. Um, but first off, I want to say, when you're doing an aeration, it's best just to aerate the whole yard. It's beneficial to thick turf and it's even more beneficial to compact the turf. So if you're gonna go with the work doing an aerator, now it's different. Now maybe you, you can aerate a whole backyard and maybe a whole front yard if you have different issues. But if you're out there running an aerator, it's not worth doing small spots or small sections. Just aerate the whole yard. It'll always benefit. Um, and she goes, oh, we'll go on to ask some more questions. I noticed your, your logo is a bird of paradise and I love those bird of paradise. These are awesome. Um, I have many orange birds around our yard and some are doing well, but others are thin. Uh, the white birds didn't handle the freeze well and have dead leaves, but new growth. Any advice for the birds or do you only handle lawns? We absolutely handle shrubs as well. Um, it was, a, it was a rough freeze. Ideally, the birds, uh, you know, could have been covered, would have helped. Um, but if you're seeing new growth, that's a really good sign. I know there's pictures in here. So when we get into the pictures, we'll get into a little more detail. But I just want to go over it. Now, what about uh, pine bark versus mulch? Uh, we're trying to decide uh, if we should replace the pine bark with mulch. Uh, but would also like to know if we should go all the way up to the plants or leave a ring around the plants. A lot of the orange bird seems to have root rot. Could be either the coverage or grading that doesn't allow drainage. Okay, so this is a great question I can address right here immediately. Um, so first off, pine bark is the biggest loser of mulch there is. And the only reason is because it's the lightest and it floats the most. So when you get heavy rains, it freaking washes down your driveway, it washes into your yard, and you can't keep the stuff in your beds. So that's why I don't like pine mulch. Um, there's no upside, there's no there's no upside in the other mulch. The only downside is that it floats and it's gonna leave a mess. Um, so I would just go with regular mulch. Um, you know, and then pick a color that you like for your yard. I recommend if you like a darker color, always get black because black turns to brown very quickly. Brown mulch fades out very fast. So if you want darker, always get black because that goes to brown very quickly. Um, and then with uh, drainage and cover and things, um, that's something you have to fix. Uh, you know, especially with birds of paradise, anything that really produces like that, it's gonna be more particular. So, um, Fixing the drains can help, but uh, also actually leaving a ring around the plants is huge. Big, big win right there. No, no, seriously, no plant should have mulch up against the base. Now, a lot of now a lot of our native plants uh, will do just fine. The majority of plants do have mulch pushed up against them and they'll do fine. But there should be a volcano-like ring around the root ball of the plant. The root ball should be out and exposed, plant up, mulch ring around. Um, and that can definitely cause rotting. Now, where I really see plant struggle is things that produce flowers. Uh, azaleas, birds of paradise, just anything that is a flowering, usually really, uh, hydrangeas are huge, usually get really affected by that mulch pushing up. I had a customer who had root rot and hydrangeas dying like crazy. And all I did was I pulled the mulch away from the base. Two months later, she goes, wow, 
Whatever you treated those hydrangeas with was awesome. They look amazing. I'm so, I'm so happy, thank you. I said, I didn't treat them with anything. I just pulled the mulch away and let the top of the roots breathe. And I made sure that they weren't overwatering. Um, so they thought I treated it with something when all we did was pull the mulch away. So that's really big advice right there. Mulch should never be up against the base of a plant. You should always have a ring around um, and the root ball should always be exposed. The top of the root ball should always be exposed. Number one reason plants die in the state of Florida is from being buried too deep. Plant high, and then, and then mulch up, not around the base, but around the root ball. Because don't forget, if you always plant too high and you have problems, you can always add a little bit more mulch or a little bit more dirt and build it up. Now you can pull it out. Now something super established, you can't pull out of the ground and put up. Uh, especially like a bird of paradise, but maybe a newer plant that hasn't rooted so well, you can possibly pull it up, tear off some of the rotted roots, replant it into something drier. But again, number one reason plants die in the state of Florida is from being planted too deep. Keep your plants high and keep your mulch away from the base. Huge win right there. Now, like I said, if you do have drainage issues and things, that's going to be, I would do all the other steps first. And then if it's still staying too wet, wrong, you know, uh, right plant, wrong place. That's just, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, that happens. Um, so we'll try to start attending your weekly live. Awesome. Thank you. Here you are. Um, but we really appreciate your help on next steps for the lawn so we can get it going ASAP, which is very important because our nice hot summer is coming. Um, even though it's going to be 36 degrees this weekend here in North Florida, which is why I tell people to be careful. Uh, I tell people to be careful about uh, fertilizing too early here in North Florida. Uh, to come take a look at what we'd appreciate. Uh, here are some photos uh, in case email is better. Uh, we are able to work, uh, but we need your expertise. We're able to do the work ourselves. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Good, good email. Thank you for the description, Justin. What about avocado trees? Same thing, man. Even, even more. Um, like so things that produce flowers or fruits or, or, or vegetables, anything that really produces something of substance, uh, it takes a lot more energy than most plants. Um, so. The avocado tree, extremely important um, to make sure that the, the mulch is pushed away from all fruit trees and things like that. Oh, but also do more homework because all those producing trees uh, need a little bit, uh, they're always a little bit tricky. Some like a little bit of this, some like a little bit of that. So do your homework, look up what they like here. Um, but you're always going to win with planting a little bit higher and not pushing mulch right up against the base. So we have the rundown here. Let's go check on the pictures. So we have, okay, so let's just, I'm, we'll do a quick uh, look through. Can I go from picture to picture on here? Yes, I can. Sweet. Um, so we have a good picture. Uh, obviously, this is a rough area. It looks like the basketball hoop was there. Basketball hoop was here. Um, what I would honestly do is this area is very compacted. So this whole area absolutely needs resodding. Or, uh, sorry, sorry, does not need resodding. Sorry, needs aeration. This whole area needs aeration. I apologize. And then um, you can use my how to fill in thin and bare areas video where you put down sand and soil. But honestly, these areas are just so beautifully bare by three pieces of sod, dig it out and put new sod in there. Um, but you can also do uh, the sand and soil method as well. Let's look at some other ones. So again, guys, remember this yard was cut at two inches and dethatched. Um, this hurts right here looking at this. But uh, it doesn't look too destroyed, to be honest. I was, you know, I would really think I've, I've, I've seen some defatched yards and runners shooting straight up in the. I've seen a mess. Um, so this doesn't look too too bad. Um, but it definitely is not in good shape and is gonna need some love. This is very thin and bare. Um, th th this grass is going to really uh, take a beating. I hope the irrigation um, is functioning very well. I would make sure you're getting very good coverage on the irrigation. Hi Chad, good to see you. Thank you, uh, Demetrius, you as well. I appreciate the comment and the support as always. Thank you. So yeah, same thing here. You can see the lawn, it's very thin. But man, I'm surprised there's still some green. Really not looking too too rough to be honest. Um, it's pretty bad here. Now, I mean, if this was just your your yard normally, this would be rough. But for detaching and scalping, I think you're gonna be okay in a lot of this. Yeah, this this tree oak trees are usually long killers. By the way, uh, spread grass clippings out. Mm. 
Hmm. Let me think about that for a second. If the grass clippings, if you can guarantee that the grass clippings are just actual clippings of the blades, because so so you have the grass blades and you have the stolons, which I, I, we call the runners, which is kind of like the vine-like thing that the, the St. Augustine grows on and then has those shoots up. Um, so uh, so you have the rhizome, stolons, and, and all those, but we'll just call them runners. So runners. Now those don't decompose. So if you have bits of the dead runners with the debris, just trash the debris, don't put that back in the lawn. But if, if Sydney, if you can guarantee that it's just actual clippings from the top of the grass blade, you can spread those out, but lightly. Um, I would do continuous light levels of spreading it. Don't go all out at once. Um, it's the detached grass. Ah. I wouldn't, I, I would, I would really have to see it, to be honest. And without seeing it, I'm going to say no, just because it's just, and I know it doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it could be. If those, those runners you put back in there, that'll really just, you'll add more thatch back to it. And, and, and that's literally going backwards. You might get away with your lawn recovering from dethatching, which would be amazing. So I, I don't think it's worth the risk. Again, if I saw the clippings, I could give you a confident answer, but without visually seeing the clippings, I think it's best to stay away. Uh, this is what I thought your whole yard was going to look like. And if it was, uh, we would be having a very quick conversation because there wouldn't be many tips for me but then other to replace the yard. Um, but this is being in such a small area. Um, I think you'll be okay because I'm seeing a lot of green around it. So I don't know how this area got so rough. But again, this is what I thought your lawn was going to look. And thank goodness it doesn't. So let's go through the, the other parts. See, so here's here's a big problem with dethatching. Because even though you dethatched and almost oh oh the quality's gonna load in. Nice. So even though you dethatched and almost killed your yard, there's still a bunch of dead runners, which is what you really needed to get up. Um so it really doesn't look like the detaching was as successful, which I think is the reason your lawn is going to survive with some TLC, but I think your lawn's going to survive. But I think if you detached it hard enough where you got all these runner out, which is what it's supposed to do, I don't think you would have much of a lawn. So that's again, guys, why detaching is not really great here because, you know, um, Cindy and Dustin, I'm sure, well, if they paid somebody, they either paid someone a lot of money or detached themselves. So if they detached themselves, they did a lot of work and really didn't get that much results and really damaged and set their lawn back. It's a big reason while detaching is just really not worth it. Same thing, a lot of these, mm, this doesn't look too bad in here. Well, some. Okay, then we go, is there any more lawn pictures? Yeah, Ugh. It's, that's bad, but Sydney and Dustin, I think we're, I think we're looking at recovery here. You're gonna need some extra water, you know, some extra love, but I think, I think you're gonna get you, you think you're gonna get about 90% of your lawn back here. Oh yeah, these are some winter damaged plants. Ooh, we, oh, there's a croton. Okay, there's some more. Oh, look at that beautiful bird of paradise. Uh, she took a beating, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, kind of got a little out view here. Okay. So we went through all the pictures here. I'll be really, oh, so you didn't, you didn't really use a dethatcher. You just scalped it and then raked it up. Is that what happened? I thought, I'm thinking you used a dethatcher, which would, which would really make, make, uh, sense so let me know yeah if you just scalped it and raked it up it's gonna make a lot more more sense and then also 
Uh, have you applied anything to the lawn since this was done? Any fertilizers, any weed controls, or anything? It's like a power rake. Okay, that's why a lot of these are left. Yeah, so it, it, so it was more just a scalping and a power raking. Okay. Well, that's why the lawn's gonna recover, but just I, I just don't think it's gonna be very benefit. Now, if you, you scalped your yard, you top aerated and top dressed and did all this work. Okay, no, that's good. Okay, okay. So I'm glad you didn't use the dethatcher, and it's making sense why this yard is recoverable. Because if you use a dethatcher, like I said, usually the whole yard looks like this. So uh, that's a good thing you didn't, but so let, let's just address this. Oh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Any areas about this size, this is about right on the edge of sod or soil. Um, I would do either. I would either just, if you guys want to dig it out and put a couple pieces of sod in, feel free. That's the most work, but immediate results. Or if you want to put in some, uh, dirt and uh, some black cow and sand to help the areas, uh, fill in, that'll work as well. The only downside with doing that is you have weeds in between and it'll take time for it to fill in, but it's cheaper than cheaper and less work than sod. So that'll be your answer there. Now for the whole lawn, um, it, it's not as bad as I thought. So what I'm going to recommend, um, and, and you were kind of on point, um, Cindy's watched a lot of videos and she got a lot of information. Um, we spoke on the phone briefly, um, and she was pretty on point with what needed to be done here. And now that I'm seeing this, I'm agreeing. So definitely an aeration because when soil's exposed like this and the, the sun and the rain beat on it, this can cause compaction as well. There's many different ways to cause compaction, but having your lawn thin bare and exposed soil is a huge way so let's aerate this soil to kind of loosen it back up but now uh last week's video i was with a gentleman and i was telling him his, his lawn was super compact i was telling him to tear up his yard as much as possible kind of like more tilling it than just aerating it this situation is going to be different i don't really want you to tear it up i want you to do a moderate aeration which is two maybe three passes i really don't want you to rip it up too much because the lawn is very stressed already so um, do a good two to three pass aeration. And I would do that as soon as possible um, before the really, really hot temperatures come in. Um, and don't, no shoe spikes. It has to be a core aeration, hollow spikes, core aeration, no shoe spikes. Um, that would be the first thing. And then I mean, the, really the best thing, and this is the best thing for anyone's lawn I advise, it's just so hard to do, is this whole yard really needs to be top dressed. Um, and because the yard's so big and it's almost everywhere, I would really recommend getting the command instead of mixing the black cow and sand because that can, um, be, that can really become a lot of work. But I would aerate and then top dress black cow and sand or command over as much of the yard you can. The reason this one's so difficult is because this is just a freaking nightmare to do. There's no easy way than mixing the soil up and spreading it through the yard with a shovel, uh, you know, and then raking it out and spreading it around. Just, you know, top dressing machines are expensive. Most people don't have them here. Um, you know, doing this in a small area is not really a big deal, but over the whole lawn, it's just extremely difficult. So at least my advice would be to not be too overwhelmed with top dressing, let's top dress the worst areas, okay? These, for sure, in full sun. Shade areas will help be protected. So, uh, it, it, if there's gonna be a, a hierarchy in the where to top dress and where not to be, it's gonna be the thinnest, brownest, sunniest areas. Please top dress that first. How thick? Um. In an ideal world, two to three inches. Um, I would like to see at least two inches in the sunniest and thinnest areas, and then at least an inch over the rest of the yard. Um, it's just, it's not, I, I, two to three over the lawn is the best, but at least two in one. Um, that would really be ideal, um, especially if you did something. Now, the better the soil, the less you can use. If you got command, you could really 
thin out the herd, but I even have a hard time getting command right now. So, um, it's, and I've had, I know homeowners have a really hard time getting it. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But anywhere between one to three inches, no less than one inch. It's just gonna, it would just pretty much just gonna be gone after that. Um, so that would be the best way in top dressing. Now let's talk nutrients to a yard like this. We have to consider a lot of things, you know, the, the, the thinness of the lawn, the stress the lawn's already been through in the time of year. Now again, um, best thing we can do for this lawn is going to be micronutrients and potassium. So let's say... So let's, uh, oh, potassium is for people too. So let's look. That's not even potassium. What is it? Here we go. You're gonna want um fifty-two dollars, man. man. Potassium, every everything's expensive. That's just me freaking out the prices like I do every time I look at everything every day now. Um This would be a great product is potassium. And the reason why, and this is organic, ooh. Sulfate, a potash, and potassium, same thing. So a 0, 0, 050 here. This is gonna be great. So the reason I'm recommending potassium is two main reasons. One, potassium is a root developer. When you talk, when you scalp St. Augustine, roots die. Before we can focus on the top of this grass again, we need to focus on the underneath of this grass. So let's get this plant's energy focused on redeveloping those roots. Because seriously, roots died when you scalped your lawn like that. Which is why we really can't do these scalping and dethatching and all that here in the St. Augustine. So, so you lost some roots underneath there. So this is great. And then the second reason is potassium is not hot when it releases. Like nitrogen and things, they produce heat when they release, which can cause stress and dryness. This will not do that. So a zero, zero, 050 will be a beautiful thing. Now the only, you will, in your condition, you may see results because the lawn is such bad shape, but this is not for results. This is not to get you results. This is to build the foundation of your lawn back. Kind of like we're starting, we're gonna kind of, ooh, here we go. We're gonna kind of treat this like new sod, okay? We're gonna be very careful and delicate and not do too much. More is not better. So like, well, you wouldn't aerate new sod, but besides the aeration, it's a light to moderate aeration. We're applying potassium um, at a moderate rate. I would be doing this monthly. Go ahead and apply it at whatever the label rate is a month. You don't have to use exactly this brand, by the way. This is me just shopping and kind of showing you what's out there. But a 0050, 0060, um, whatever. This is a, uh, you can buy a 2,000 pound bag. <laughs> um, but this is an organic option. So that's always great. Ruffles, what are you doing? Um, Sorry. So that's gonna be great. And then the next thing, um, time between aeration, top dress, micronutrients, potassium, all at once, ASAP. Aeration, uh, well, potassium, uh, ASAP. Absolutely potassium tonight, you know, that type of thing. And luckily with the potassium, there's gonna be no certain, well, I would always do it after the aeration, but if you're, let's say it's gonna be a week before you know you can do the aeration, um, What if a company said aeration um, shouldn't be done now, have to wait till, uh, so if you're, now yet, yeah, I like personally, we're not doing aerations till April. Um, 
but that's because we're pushing a fertilizer out and we're trying to we're, we're trying to promote growth with our aeration and probably so as other customers i think for result wise of, of visuals of the lawn you should wait till april to do an aeration but this lawn has an active issue we're trying to address because we're not doing the aeration um to get results we're doing the aeration because there's an active issue with the lawn and we're trying to recover it so doing it now is going to be okay because they won't get that pop, but you're, they're not gonna get that pop anyways because the lawn's in so much trouble. So in normal conditions, yes, you should wait till it's warmer. We're waiting till April because we're getting um, cooler March temperatures. But when your lawn's in a distress of a certain situation or because like I said, because there, this lawn here is, this lawn here is so damaged that I'm actually don't want to wait till it's warmer for, for Sydney and Dustin because um, it can do more damage because their lawn is getting beat by the heat. So that is why, but yes, it is right ideally to wait till April uh, normally for an aeration. This is kind of a special condition um, here. Or if you have super, super compacted soil, same thing. Just know you might not get that pop from the aeration because you're doing it too early, but you are still loosening the soil. So, uh, sorry, Sydney, I got a little derailed there. We were looking at, at the potassium. So, um, you do the potassium right away because that's something easy to get and to apply quickly. And then I would do the aeration and then do another round of potassium after the aeration so those granular pellets can fall into the holes you created and then top dress after the aeration. That's the most important. Top dressing must be after the aeration. And then this potassium monthly, and then we're going to find a micronutrient to do monthly as well. Chad, can I sign up for your uh, aeration uh, with you in April? Absolutely, Keith. If you give our office a call, uh, we are not scheduling them yet, but we will add you to a board. Um, and we are calling people mid to end of March to schedule for April aerations. Um, so please feel free to give our office a call. So uh, it's going to be this, and then um, let's look for some micro. Um, we'll do granular. Uh, it's just the easier, easier way for homeowners to apply. Oh, not Mavro. There we go. Granular micronutrient fertilizer. Hundred dollars. What is that? Price is making me sweat over here. Um, I'd really like to know what's in this bag, please. Please, sir, can I have some more? Oh, there we go. Some more information. Okay, product's not fine. Well, I'm sorry, this product doesn't exist, I guess. Um, gosh, I need to make granular micronutrients. These suck. They're not really there. Okay, okay, maybe I, I spoke too soon. This is weird stuff. Uh, weird bag. So high step micronutrients, granular fertilizer, high mag granular provides important secondary nutrients, initial continued growth. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. A little low on iron, but for you, you're not too worried about that because um, iron's just for color. And trust me, color's the last thing we're worried about in your lawn. It's nice to see color, but um, for your situation, that's not what we're worried about. This, so I would do the 0050 once a month and this once a month and then... Um, I love humic acid. Just find some um, granular humic acid. Perfect. One, one, once a month. And now you can you can apply all these products on the same day. You can put the potassium in your spreader, push the spreader, 
Um, you can uh, put potassium in your spreader, push your spreader, fertilize uh, with the potassium. You can come back, put the micros in the spreader, put the micros out. You can come back, do the humic, put the humic out. You, you can do all of these on the same day, but don't mix them at in the same mix because everything has different pellet sizes and that chooses the rate. So if you mix different pellet sizes and different bags together, you won't get an even application. So do these separately, but all these are really light to the lawn. Don't overdo these now. Go at the bag rate and if you're not sure, go low. You can always apply more. Um, but these are all very safe and, and, and you should not have any damage or burning to the lawn. Um, has the window for Turf Organics pre-emergent apps passed? Are you guys still doing them? We are still doing pre-emergence because uh, North Florida is very weird um, because you can kind of do pre's from January to March. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing, except we, we do, we do something different because of how long we have to run our programs, but we're actually going to be doing pre's for the next four months because we're split apping them. Hey, get sciencey and nerdy. I don't want to get into, but no, it, the, the pre-emergence have not passed, uh, uh, for turf organics yet. So you are still good there. But yeah, Sydney and Dustin, all three of these products, and um, uh, Julio's chimed in. Uh, he does a lot of stuff himself. A Amazon has potassium and micro, so I guess go to Amazon. I'm trying to just Google it. I don't want to try to be biased, uh, you know, promoting one thing or the other. Only I always like trying to support small business and buying things in America. Um, that's always a big win. But I just kind of try to search search things. But um, Amazon may may have what you want there. Um, and then I would just do, um, just do that once a month at, to the lawn. I would not really, hmm. I, I would not, I would not do any macros besides the potassium till, uh, uh, fall. Depending how the yard looks, maybe you can do it like a, a normal fall push. Or maybe use like a shrub fertilizer in the fall, like an 848 or something like that, or a 101010. Um, but I wouldn't use any of that now. And then maybe even another fall aerations and top dressing. Um, I would plan to be doing aerations. Uh, you do two this year if you want, but I'd be planning to do aerations for the next two to three years every spring. Um, top dress in the spring if you can, but at least the aeration. Um, and then you kind of have to see how this yard comes comes back through in the year. And then also watering. Uh it's going to be tricky because the soil in Florida's years are so weird. You're going to need to water more than normally, but don't overwater. So, uh, because I saw that you have uh, this oak tree in the shade. By the way, I love this bed ring around the oak tree because grass does not do well right up against the oak tree, guys. This is always a great thing to do. Put these rings around oak trees because there's a lot of high exposed roots in these areas. Ornamental grasses are great for this. They don't care. Um, so, this is a good design. But like, see, this shaded area will probably, you know, not need as much water, but that little full sun patch right there is going to dry out pretty quickly with how thin the lawn is. So just keep an eye on the watering. Plan to water between two to four days a week and maybe you only water certain parts of your lawn and not the other when it's drying out. But when you have the situation, uh, watering is probably the most difficult. So like I said, some areas are going to be dry and some areas are not. Like this area is going to be extreme. This area, need to put, I would do the two or three inches of soil. But you know, with it being exposed and all these runners, this area is going to dry out before the rest of the lawn. So if you're trying to recover this area and it's constantly getting dry, it's not going to happen. So it's going to the watering is going to be difficult. Um, but I would just expect to be have a little bit higher of a water bill this year. But I tell everyone, eat it, eat it for this year. Water more, do what you need to do because if you do this right now. Um, you won't be doing it next year nearly as much at least. But if you if you half-ass it this year, you're going to half-ass it next year, then you're just going to extend how long you have to deal with doing all this extra crap. So ideally, I think I, we can get your yard back. If you follow this program, I think you'll be back on a normal program next year besides maybe aerating and top dressing in the spring. Those still things might need to be done, at least aerating, um, but I think you can go back to a normal macro spring and then like a spoon-feeding um then like a spoon feeding uh summer next year that that's the plan so there is that uh scott's lawns response is the name is the name amazon okay so scott's lawn response looks like uh it's a good product 
Um, I've never used it, but Julio does a lot of his lawn stuff himself. Um, so if he's got good experience recommending it, I would say it's probably a pretty good product. Now let's um, well let's see. Okay, so that was for the lawn. Um, Dustin and Sydney, do you guys have? Any, I hope you have your pens and paper out. Sound like you did because you didn't comment a lot. So I think you were doing a lot of writing, which is good. Do you have any questions about the lawn? What, when, where you need to do, how, who, anything? Um, oh my gosh. Feel free to uh, ask away. I'm going to move on to your plants and then to the next email um, before I beat a dead horse because I love repeating myself. So let's see if you guys have any more questions. I'll let you kind of ponder on it for a second um, while maybe we look at this bird of paradise here. So nice. This should be okay. New growth. Guys, with your freezes, new growth is always a great sign. Um, very happy. To be honest... I'm not sure about trimming off the dead growth on this bird of paradise. Um, a lot of plants you want to trim off the dead growth because it wastes energy. You don't want to do it too soon. Um, but again, when you have um, these producing plants, they're a little more delicate. So to be honest, I'm not 100% sure about... Sorry, that was my cat shaking the camera. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure on when to trim these off or even if to, but you have new growth. That's exciting. And then also, and then also, um, excuse me. And then also time to fertilize. Okay. And you can probably push some dirt around there. Like I said, you want to see the top of the root ball exposed. This was kind of, I mean, dirt pushed up against the root ball during winter time is okay to, or during a freeze. That's the protective. Um, but what I would do is push that away, let the root ball breathe and then get a good 10, 10, 10. Um, there's probably something a little more suspicious. Sus, sus, a little more better, something that can be used better uh, for like a, a bird of paradise, but definitely start getting some food on it. It's ready. New growth is a great sign. And do that with all, give all your plants till the end of April, guys. Feed them. Now you, you can you can start feeding them now. Nothing crazy. 10, 10, 10. Feed them with 10, 10, 10. Um, give them a little while. Uh, and if they don't come back uh, by April, it's probably dead and just replace it. Uh, like like the crotons and things, you know. And crotons are such a small small plant like like this. I would, you know, you can wait if you want, but uh, ideally, sir, I've seen you already trimmed it. And I know with the croton and things, it's okay to trim off the dead. I'm just 100% not, not sure of the bird of paradise. But I can, I can talk to some people and get back with you. I don't want to tell you anything I'm not sure of. I have a hell of a time keeping weeds out of the flower beds and mulch. Pre or post, can you recommend? Um... So, uh, pre, uh, preen, preen is, I think preen up, they call it from Home Depot. That really should be fine. Uh, it's, it's pretty cheap and common. Just do a nice, good application of it. So you can use preen up in there. Um, and then I like for treating the weeds in the beds. I like the water, vinegar, salt, and dish soap mix, but, and you use commercial grade vinegar. That's the trick. A lot of people are like, it doesn't really work that well. And guys, we're still working our weed killer. I know. I It frustrates me every day that I'm not selling that weed killer. Um, but it's out where it's at is out of my control, which is why it's the most frustrating to me. But the, the commercial grade vinegar, dish soap, salt, and water is a good mix to kill the weeds in your beds. Go around and do it weekly. I tell everyone, you have to do it weekly because think about this. Weeds... Weeds produce their seed cycle in five to seven days on average. So if you wait five to seven days to treat your weeds, you're going to have double the weeds. Nothing about this. After the weeds have doubled, now they're quadrupling the next time because double the weeds are seeding. So you're not just doubling every time. You're quadrupling, sextupling, and it's, it's literally, it snowballs so fast. So choose once a week. Put your preen, preen up in, in the spring, in the fall. Put that down and then treat the weeds once a week in your bed. It'll only take you 10 minutes unless you have a huge home. When can we put down weed killer again? Um, so no pre's. Pre's are out of the question. Um, until your lawn is thick and full. Everyone pre-emergence only work in thick lawns. Do not apply thick. Uh, do not apply pre's 
and, and thin and bare areas. Um, so you are okay to use a weed killer anytime, but no granular weed killers and you have to spot treat. So you need to get a hand pump. I would recommend Dustin Sydney get a product called Avenue South. Avenue like, like a street and then South like where we live. Well, we live in North Florida, but South from the, the United States. Um, follow the, the instructions. It's gonna just it's gonna be like two to four ounces a gallon. I would lean on the small side, do two. Put it in a one gallon hand pump, two gallon hand pump, or a backpack, whatever. And then you can go around and spot treat the weeds. It's gonna it's it's annoying, but that's the only way. Applying herbicide over this whole lawn is gonna stress it. Her, applying herbicide over an entire lawn always stresses it, even if it's healthy. But when it's thin and struggling, it's just gonna stress it more. So you are good to spot treat anytime. Actually, I'm sorry. Do not spot, do not treat weeds one month after an aeration. Um, but anytime after that, you're good to spot treat weeds. I would do that once a month, fill up a backpack and go around and find the weeds and get very close to them and try to only spray the herbicide on the weeds as best as possible. And do that once a month. And that should keep the weed, excuse me, I had a big dinner. Um, that should keep the weed levels manageable um, until, you know, we can really start putting, you know, until the lawn thickens up and you can start putting some more herbicide down. Um, I think that'll, yeah, that'll work best uh, for you guys and that should be uh, quite manageable there with the Avenue South. I think, yeah, that, that'll be perfect. Um, I'm thinking about trying... Um, tr Trinapex ethylene as an experiment on St. Augustine by the side of my house. I am crazy as a homeowner to try that. What do you think of PGRs in general? Um, let's see here. Um, Theodore, let me get back to you because that's a very good question. So let me finish this up here. Uh, okay, Cindy and Dustin. Um, perfect, perfect, perfect. This doesn't, this doesn't even look too bad right here. So, you guys, you guys, I think you guys will get your lawn back in a year. Um, you know, this is cringy. Uh, it makes me, ugh. But, uh, this bird of paradise is doing great. This guy will do fine. But, um, feel free. I'm about to move on to the next part and actually answer a question here in the chat. Um, but, but Sydney and Dustin, let me know if you guys are good for me to move on. But I, I think we've got a good plan together for you guys. I think it's really going to work. The most important part is going to be staying consistent and executing on that. Um, but let me see about this active ingredient here. Um, I am not too familiar. Well, I say that. I just don't remember them all. So let me see what type of product these are in. Okay, Dustin, yes. Perfect, guys. Awesome. Well, uh, Dustin, Sydney, if you have any more questions, uh, you guys have my email, and feel free to always jump in um, to these chats. Um, oh, I know what this is. Um, Yeah, and feel free to always... Uh, jump in to the, to the chats and ask questions, but thank you so much for the, the email. This was great content. Um, I'll probably try to snip a few clips out of this and maybe make a video um, because I think there was a lot of good information shared, shared here. All right, so let's read about this here. Uh, used by homeowners and professional athletes to manage growth of warm tool. Oh, reducing. Oh, this is a growth reducer. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, this is interesting here. Um, I would test it, to be honest with you. But uh, here's something I can say. So I've used growth regulator on shrubs before a long time ago. They were very new. Um... They, they worked well. They regulated the growth and also they thickened the shrubs. I just think uh, it, it shouldn't be applied too much. Should I wait till after the cold weather this weekend to aerate? 
Um, yeah, I would I would just wait till next next week or at least Sunday. Uh, but get that pota- get all the products, and I would just work on the rest of this week getting all the products and everything together, and go ahead and plan to start everything next next week. Um, supposedly reduces vertical growth, promotes stolen. Um. Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, how much is this bottle? 150 bucks. What's this label rate? Um, let's see, we're gonna we're gonna look at the label here. That's why I wasn't familiar with this active. I am not familiar with growth regulators. Amount of water. Wait, wait, this is weird. Fish amount of water. Half to okay, per thousand mix only volume. Okay, okay, okay. That, that makes sense. Hmm. Bermuda Recipo. Uh, application rates. St. Aug, there's two, <laughs> Texas Common. Okay, so what do we have here? St. Augustine Grass, uh, so four and a half to six and a half ounces per thousand, 150 bucks. Okay, pricing's not, pricing's not too bad. So my only concern, I would test it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually probably gonna get some, I don't know if I'll get this brand, I'm gonna talk to some people. I think I'm gonna get some and test it myself actually. But here is the downside now, uh, what I believe, or what I can guarantee is going to happen, well, what can happen. So um, if, if it promotes growth, lateral growth, and um, root growth, uh, that is great, but you have to fertilize appropriately. Like, don't give your lawn nitrogen and then use a growth regulator because you've literally wasted that nitrogen and it may either stress the grass out or the grass physically won't pick up the nitrogen it'll get wasted into our environment. So that's one concern I have is if you're going to use this, make sure not to use something that promotes heavy growth or, or heavy nitrogen. Low nitrogen would probably be okay. But then give it a try in a hidden part of the lawn. Yeah, I'd give it a try. But now here's where I know an issue will happen is fungus. Okay, uh, gray leaf spot fungus is very, very popular in the summer. And now, the great thing about gray leaf spot fungus is most of the time, it, it, it doesn't get a chance to eat and destroy the lawn because it starts at the top and works its way down. And usually the grass is growing so fast in the summer that you're mowing off the fungus before it can do damage. Now, if you have this growth regulator in your lawn and your lawn is not growing, the fungus does not have a chance to grow out. So now you have to treat that fungus and then also Let's say we do treat the fungus, those damaged blades. Now, your, your, your grass blades don't go from ground, brown to green. If you have a brown grass blade, that, that grass blade is forever brown and will have, to, will have to either be picked up or die and decompose. The only way to get green again is for new growth to grow out. So when you have that fungus, it's going to spread because the grass is not growing. And then you'll never get, you won't get rid of the damage because the damage won't grow and be mowed away. You'll just be stuck with fungus looking grass but if the fungus isn't active it won't spread so that's the only problem and same thing if you get chinch bugs or sod webworms especially sod webworms sod webworms will chew the grass blades all the way down and then the grass will grow back usually within a week or two that's the great thing about sod webworms is um they can do a lot of damage quickly but since they don't damage the active roots or the runners the grass can recover so if you use a growth regulator and you happen to get sod webworms in those areas, well, guess what? You may can treat the sod webworms all day, but then the grass can't recover because it's not growing and will probably die. So that I already know is the downsides of it because those things will happen because we rely, rely in our industry for the grass, the damaged grass to grow out and recover. Like if you used it um, like well, where you had winter damage, you're going to be stuck with winter damage because you have to mow that winter damage out after you fertilize. You're, you're not fertilizing your lawn. Your lawn's turning green. New growth is coming and you're mowing off the old growth. So hopefully that makes sense. I know that'll be a problem. I would still try it. Uh, I think it's interesting. Um, but from a professional standpoint, it doesn't make sense from a homeowner. Um, it could work out. Try it and get back with me. Definitely. 
I used it, uh, I think, I'll, yeah, I used it, my St. Augustine did not like it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, and I figured, um, like I said, if you ever have a problem, you won't, um, interesting, I'll be careful. Yeah, it, no, nothing's gonna, you know, do it on the side of your house where no one's gonna see it in a small area. You, you should be okay, um, but that could be part of it. I got rampaged by webworm, army worm just before winter. Never used so much long in my career. Yeah, uh, man, sod webworms and army worms are different beasts nowadays. Five years ago, we used to laugh at them. When a customer had sod webworms, we would, we would go, all right, whatever. And we would show up three days after they called and spray a, a light contact insect, a, a bifin over it, you know. And the sod webworms would die. And we would never have to go back to the yard and check. But sod webworms and army worms are new beasts, okay? They are monsters. Monsters. They move faster, quicker than ever, and also they don't want to be treated. Bifin, no good anymore. Cypress, no good. A lot of these products that used to easily treat sod webworms are now not working. I now buy a product that is thirteen hundred dollars a gallon to treat for sod webworms. It's actually really safe, and you only use a very little bit, so the pricing does end up working out. But it's a very high end product, and uh. It's been around for a while, but people really didn't use it because you didn't need to for some webworms. But like I said, they have become monsters. So, okay, we're done there. Are tunes still going? I don't have any tunes. All right, I'm just gonna restart the tunes. Um, we're done there. We're done there. We're done there. There. We're done there. All right. Okay, now to a, uh, so, um, uh, are you talking about the, uh, um, uh, the product I was talking about? A celebrant, a celebrant. Um, a residual, well, everything we use has to have a, a, a residual, but I think you're more asking contact or systemic. Um, I believe a celebrant has a little bit a both. Um, systemics don't really seem to work very well on solid webworms, which doesn't make sense because they absolutely ingest the blade. Um, but contacts alone don't seem to work very well. So I believe the mix of a contact and a systemic for solid webworms is the most effective treatment that there will be um, because uh, and then, and also they come out at night. So treating in the late evening with the contact, I think the main problem with the contact is, um, is it doesn't get to them well and the systemics aren't as effective. So when you use both, you're covering both ends, but I bet, I bet a, um, Alex, oh man, I'm late. Hey, no worry, Alex. We're, we're obviously, we're still here. Um, but, uh, using them together or treating late at night or in the evening can be affected because that's when they're coming out and they may be more exposed and out because they hide during the day from the heat. So I would try to use a systemic um, and a uh, contact with at least a 30 day residual or um, the residual is not a big deal for a homeowner because you guys can retreat. Us as professionals, we like 60. I don't use anything that's has less than a 60 to 90 day residual. Um, and we, I use pretty much all systemic besides the acelloprim because I like systemic because contact can kill things that you don't exactly want it to and can infect our environment more than we would like. These are a lot of things to consider when we do this type of work. So by using systemic, I know the product is absorbing into the plant and only affecting things that actively feed on the plant. So I know I'm targeting the pests that I really want to rather than pay, uh, pray and spray. But I use a contact when treating saw webworms, but I know I'm actively treating saw webworms. There's active issue. So I feel comfortable using the contact. And unfortunately, it's kind of the only effective way using both nowadays. Because two years ago, I tried just systemic and I got my butt kicked, man. I've never seen them before. Treat them, go away, be back in like three to four weeks. Crazy, never seen it. So I switched to the contact and systemic affecting. Seems to be highly effective. So um, now this is a equipment question. This is long and worded, um, but this has really good information. I think that a lot of homeowners um, do ask. And I think uh, homeowners like Julio and things can really jump in because they're probably using um, <clears throat> some of these equipments and tools. So hi, Chad, glad to see you're back on YouTube. Thank you, I appreciate it. I still haven't posted as many videos as I have because 
things have been crazy busy um and it's just been hard to but i'm, I'm happy to be uh, as back as i can be so thank you be, uh because of my chains work schedule i have to play catch up and rewatch your stream um anyhow i thought of something um that maybe we could talk about on your stream equipment tools and pest control unless you guys don't do that which we do do pest control um as far as tooling i'm in the process of trying to find a fertilizer spreader I was looking in all uh, in all store options, uh, but they all look like they're kids' toys, toddlers push around. I've seen other channels recommend Earthway 26A. Of course, they're out of stock everywhere, and Earthway themselves say uh, they're uh, back order expected to ship at the end of March. Yeah, um, like I said, if you already have a review of a product, that would be the best thing to go to. But uh, everything's back ordered nowadays, so I would order one. Um, that way you can have it coming if that seems to be the best spreader. Um, but we're gonna have to do something in the meantime. Um, let's see. That happens on my course. Blows my mind that the educated, licensed folks can't use the potent stuff. But Johnny homeowner has access to stuff pros can't use. Yeah, uh, just like atrazine. Um, guys, Scott's bonus S has atrazine in it. Guess what? Atrazine's a restricted use product. If I use, which I don't use atrazine because it's an absurd product to use because there's so much better products. If I use atrazine on any of my customers' yards at any rate, I have to document everywhere it's been applied, everywhere that that's been applied for five years. Okay, I the, the, and, and the EPA or the Department of Agriculture or whatever can come in and subpoena my records and see where it's been applied and I can get a felony and have my license taken away if I lie, don't tell it properly, or, or misecute anything where I put atrazine. But yet a homeowner can go to the store and buy atrazine and put it out at any rates under no control at any time with no worries in the world. Uh, crazy, right? Yeah, so uh, I, I agree. Um, those, those, those products and things should not be. And same thing, there's 40% nitrogen products. That should not be legal to homeowners. That's absurd. What's the best spreader? Oh, it looks like it, uh, an Earthway 20, uh, 2600A. Um, I'm not familiar with it, uh, but I'm about to be. Oh, whoa. Around. A for a uh, one one sixty five. Looks like you can get it here. I mean. It looks pretty basic. It looks like it's got, the only thing I don't like is it doesn't have a guard. Is that the guard? It's not the guard. Oh wait, is that the guard? I don't think those are guards. Yeah, the only thing I don't like is it doesn't have a side guard, but that's really not the end of the world. Just make sure you blow off anyways. I mean, this seems to be a fine, the fine spreader, especially if other people have reviewed it. You know, this is nothing a professional would use, um, but seems to be fairly great for a homeowner. Prices are very different. Wow, I guess uh, supply and demand. That's more what I'm used to. Oh, maybe this was, well, no, that's the A. <laughs> Look at that price difference. Woo! How about that 12 bucks? <laughs> I wouldn't believe that for the world. Um, yeah. These seem fine, to be honest, in, in any of these. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't see a problem with any of those. So, but unfortunately, I guess you can't get them. Now, just today I was told is good for five nine tall or shorter. Well, I'm six three. Uh, to be honest, no spreaders gonna be made for a six three man. Um, I've watched seen six three mans push a spreader, and they're hunched over. Um, that's just it is what what it is they're made for the average size and uh you're a bit taller i wouldn't be too worried about the size if you have to hunch over uh, that kind of sucks but uh unless you look for something that kind of is made for taller people or you go and buy the 500 dollars spreaders commercial spreaders that we use it's unfortunately you're probably going to be stuck on the shorter end msma was like that for a while blew my mind yeah 
I know. It's crazy the products that were that were out there and available to, to homeowners, but restricted to um, professionals. So, uh, okay, so now just today I was told, okay, oh, I reread that. Uh, I'm not trying to feel like uh, I'm 60 after hunching over push the first spreader. Yeah, I, I get you there. So we're going to check out uh, Spiker and Lesko as a DY, or I can't justify $300 away up the first spreader. Yeah, I mean, if you do want something to, I mean, that's just what it is. Like I said, my commercial spreader is 500 bucks, and it, it, it's not much different. It's just built a little bit better and to last longer, and it is a little bit you know bigger kind of for, for bigger guys and things so but again that's 500 bucks so i i think that earthway 2600 a is going to be the best thing you can get for under uh 300 bucks i mean i don't think there's much of a better option now there is also um gosh this is not ideal we call them um i mean i don't know I had one of these when I did something. These are kind of gross because they're a little too close to you and you can get some dust in your face. Now, if it's just fertilizer, just like put your shirt over, wear a bandana um, because it's, it's, it's lots of salts and things, but it's not it's not like cancerous chemicals. Um, this is another option. So uh, we call these a monkey grinder in our industry. You wear them on your chest. So you wear it on your chest, you walk around your yard, you spread. Um, you gotta have a good back, but guess what? You won't be hunched over, um, and, and and it's a decent size. What brand uh, do you prefer? I just I just do the, the basic less goes. I worked with companies that used. Um, we we tried so many freaking off brand ones and things, and it never ended up working out. Less goes. They're a bit. They're a pain. Sorry. Um, they're a pain, but. Uh, and they're expensive, but they're still the best. From my experience, from what, what I've tried. So, but these monkey grinders are great. And like I said, the only thing is it's on your chest, so stuff's kind of dusting up in your face. Not ideal, but if you're a big guy, this works. Or the hand spreaders, but hand spreader ain't gonna be good for a, 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 a big yard. But this will save you some money. These aren't too bad. Yeah, I wish I didn't have to spend five hundred dollars on those Lescos, man. <laughs> let's go, Brandon. Nice, that's a good one. Yeah, let's. Hey, ain't no one let's go in Brandon with these gas prices. I'll tell you that. Ain't, this ain't no one going nowhere. Um, where where, where was I? Oh, I'm reading. That's right. Yep, can't justify. Uh, I do. I don't have a huge lawn either. It's not small. I think the monkey grinder would be the best thing, but it's not quite an acre either. Uh, let's go is just as expensive. Yeah, researching more. I've seen some forms. Guys suggest AgriFab, which can be found at Home Depot, but not a lot of reviews. Careful with Home Depot. Home Depot likes to make their own, not like their own brand stuff, but kind of work with these, these, these Chinese companies and they make crap. If it's really cheap and it's too good to be true, it is. I bought some, at the beginning of my company, I bought some random brand um, backpack sprayers uh, from Home Depot and they were a good deal and they were too good of a deal. They all sucked and broke uh, Chinese pieces of crap. So, um, and they didn't have many reviews on them either. So I, I wouldn't do that. Don't go buy some Chinese random crap. Um, which can be found at home. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I don't need 80 plus pound classy, but I think 50 max. Uh, monkey grinders, I think, are 25. So you'll be okay there. Um, would be sweet spot. Just maybe have some thoughts and suggestions or something like that about your video string along with other tools. Like I said, it's a great question. So I never thought about really recommending the monkey grinder, um, but that's great. I put out a thousand pounds of pre-emergent in one day at a Walmart with a monkey grinder. Um, I think that's a lot of the reasons for my back problems. My back really, really hurt that day. Um, but I did a thousand pounds of pre-emergent with a monkey grinder in 12 hours. And, and I drove four hours to Tampa, to, three and a half hours to Tampa to do it. Did it all day and then drove three and a half hours home. Um, that was like the world's longest day. So on to the next. I think this goes into the more pest control, which we do and I know about. So you know i'm more than happy to help about that let's get into it um i just bought stuff to start diy pest control including bifin lp granular for for yard pest control um 
All right, let's get, let me get through this before I say anything. So I need a spreader. Uh, so wait, let me let me finish this again. Sorry, I keep doing that. <clears throat> uh, might have to break down and buy what's available for now. Uh, tough it out. I'm not quite in a position to start DOI care if I remember from previous emails. Condition of my yard is in. Um, I've gone through hell with Massey the last half year. More showing up for service and not half-assing it. Just, <clears throat> just had them aerate again and put sulfur down um, at the same time. So it will be a while before I see anything come from that. The guy did a way better job uh, this time with the aeration. Could actually see holes in the ground and plugs in the yard. Some spots are growing, but it's not 100% yet. Long and short, probably hold on to Massey until I get the yard back and um, back where it needs to be. Then I'll take over, which sounds like a good plan. This, by the way, was a video I think I did last year, a live video. We went over um, a lawn with some issues. Guys, be very careful when you hire somebody to do your aeration. Um, especially seems to be Massey. Massey does a shit job with an aeration. But if you if you, if you you call them out, they'll come back and do a good job. Um, so make sure if your yard is not plumbed with holes and really messy after an aeration, call them out and make them do it right because that's BS. If they just run over the, the lawn real quick with the narrator, that ain't doing crap. You want it to be tearing up the, the soil, seeing plugs everywhere, holes in the lawn all over. Um, so then let's go to the top. So for house pests, uh, let me let you know about Bifin. Bifin is a, uh, Massey is terrible, uh, sorry to hijack, but I was new to North Florida and got pulled in. Yeah, they're big, um, it's just a big company, you know, it's, it's run by shareholders and things, it's not about lawn and pest control anymore, it's about numbers and money, and so they can pay for their big, you know, 50-story building in downtown Orlando, it is kind of cool, but, they don't care about your lawn anymore. It's a big company and unfortunately that's what happens. They sell aerations and then do a shitty job on it. And then I have to come back and then it makes me hard to sell an aeration because I have custom. I have to tell people who need aerations all the time, but then they go, well, I just did an aeration by Massey or True Green or whatever. And it didn't do anything. I don't want to spend all this money with you to do an aeration. I already tried that. So it sucks because I'm like, oh, you haven't done our aeration. and. We fertilize after, and I we really do a proper aeration. I'm not doing it to take your money. We're doing it to improve your lawn. So be very careful with that. And then with Bifin. Bifin is a contact, okay? Uh, I've actually heard good things about the Bifin granular for uh, I, I, yard pest. Eh. But a Bifin granular, like around the base of your home, can be okay. Um, but... Bifin is a contact, usually not with a long residual. I guess it depends the product brand. But check the residual and know it's just a contact. I like Bifin better for actively treating. So if I have active roaches um, that I can visually see and, and, and actively treat, Bifin's great. Bifin will give them a good, good quick kill. But now, if you're having a big high infestation and things, you need things to stick around. You need residuals or the cockroaches are hidden behind cabinets where you can't visually see them. You're going to need to use uh, something with the residual so when they come out at night, they get in that product. Um, like there's good longer term products called like Suspend and things like that. Those will not be so much as an active treatment but more as an active prevention so that's what you're going to need to look into doing diy pest control the difference of uh of like a actively treating like bifin type products and residual type products that stick around and more prevent and are for the long term um but that's going to be experience and looking at products and things luckily with the how with those type of products uh there's a lot less of them and they're a lot cheaper than the, the things you're going to use for your lawn so move on i ha have plans to put in a wireless um taurus oh yeah yeah taurus is great i just don't know um the names of the house pest products off the top of my head uh because i, I just don't use them that much we have like 50 house pest customers you only do it four times a year so i do it a couple times a month um do you guys do termite bonds with pods around houses? If not, who do you recommend? We do not do termite bonds. Um, and I don't recommend anybody. I recommend calling several companies and getting a, getting a price. I would look for like like a ter like a Terminex because that's where they're focused on. I would try to find a company that really focuses on termites and termites is their main business, which is a lot of pest control companies. Uh, but also, I would get 
three to five estimates because they can be very costly and most companies do the exact same thing. So you can really challenge them on their pricing and get good bang for your buck. That's going to be the best way. But yeah, Taurus, um, again, I, like I said, I don't use the products as much, but um, actually, let me do, uh, let's do a little... Uh, Look, there's Term Termidor. Can't believe Termidor is still out. Oh, like this, guys. We, I, I, I love using stuff like this, like around uh, my place. Baits are great, and and they're really, really um, small. And you can put them up, and and, and you don't want to put these in areas where you're they're gonna be exposed. So you can put them up underneath the cabinets and things and in small cracks and crevices and stuff like that. That's what I do here because I live in a really, my house was, this place was very, it's a trailer and it was very old and got remodeled. So there's cracks and crevices. So the spray really doesn't work for my place. So I just do these baits about four times a year. And like I said, none of these baits are exposed. You can't see them. They're all in cabinets, cracks, crevices, um, and small tight areas. Um, and they have this for roaches and ants. So that's great as well. Um, you know, let's see. Uh, here we go. That's I think I was talking about the suspend. Uh, suspend is fine. Um, you know, what you just have to look for these things is uh, low usage race and lasts up to three months. Can be used indoors, outdoors, turf, and ornamentals. So that's going to be like the first what you're looking. So this is going to be like a more long term. Then you have to go through and read all the label and see how quick the kill is. You know, whatever things like that. Do you guys do turn my bonds? With all? Okay, uh, recommend that. I use advising by the palette for mole crickets. Love it. Yeah, you. Uh, I am so lucky for. Uh, St. Augustine, we I almost never deal with mole crickets. People have very small amounts of mole crickets in the Advion. Oh man, I love Advion's got a beautiful ant bait, man. Woo! A Advion's a very good brand. Um, they make expensive products, but man, they uh, uh they deliver. Uh, their ant stuff is some of the best. So I believe that's the best for mole crickets. Thank gosh I don't have to deal with that. So honestly, mole crickets are a freaking nightmare. So guys, look at all my, I mean, look at all these things. You know, look at, you know, here we go. Here's the Bifin uh, LP granulars. Okay, there's no little quick description. Um, you know, controls the most common pest in your lawn and garden airs with Bifin LP granulars. Give it stains for lawn and perimeter. Bifin granulars have the exact same label as the popular Tars, Tall Star uh uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, Tall Star is Bifin, just, just like the brand name. Didn't T.O. use the natural pest control sprays solutions previously? Yes, we use, um, we use... We use these products. Um, Nature Side. Commercial Concentrate. La, this is this this is good stuff. Um, but the price. This is Rosen a lot. Um, but so is everything else. So um But this stuff works great. It's very potent odor, but it didn't smell bad. It smells like fresh cut grass. Um and um and cinnamon but it's very strong we actually turf organics we only use um i initially all natural uh the baits are always an after we do to customers um and we even have natural baits that we use um i was just going the, the other things because it, it seemed like the person using the product uh was was talking more about chemicals so um I, you know i went went over those because those are mainly sprayed around your home those aren't going to affect the environment as much those are going to more affect you um but nature side for all natural is a great way to go um i've never used their granular so i'm not sure about that and I wouldn't use this ever for turf pests, um, but we use this for house pests. The only thing is, outside it works okay, inside it works beautifully. Um, but nature side products are your all natural option. 
Um, these are great. They have active sprays. They have prevention. Like this commercial concentrate, I believe these are like the prevention type. And then they have like cans that act like you can carry around the house if you see an active roach. Um, oh, actually, I think I used the, we, yeah, we used, uh, this is like the, the double concentrate. Um, we use a little bit of both here. Yeah, here we go. Like, uh, these stuff is, uh, I heard the insect repellent works well. There's some flea and ticks, but active spray. So this is great for your all natural options. And this is all we use, um, unless, uh, we're ha these don't solve an issue, which is very rare. And we have to, you know, use a chemical option, but we always talk to the customer. I usually do the baits first before I up a spray a liquid chemical. Um, but 90% of the time nature side has worked for us. Um, we get a call every now and again, go put a little bit more in the home. T t tends to be fine. But again, if you don't like using organics, which they seem to work well, Bifin, you know, um, a lot of these other products on Do My Own will, will work well. So let's move to the next here. I have plans to put in a wireless controller so I don't have to walk outside every time. I recommend as many people as possible get a smart system. Watering in Florida is a nightmare. It's not a set and forget. We can, you literally not have to water one week because it rains every day. You literally have to water three days to four days a week the next week because it's hot and dry. So Florida is very hard to set and forget. Smart system with wireless controllers are highly recommended and the best way to go. Um, and it's also, you don't have to walk out every time. You need to adjust, turn on sprinklers for whatever reason. Also, I'm looking out to change up all my pop-ups pop all to Rainbird uh are in high efficiency nozzles i think i know which these are but let me check yes yes these are great these are way better than your misters. If you live in a new community, look at your common grounds. Your common grounds use, use these type of sprinklers. But guess what? They put the cheap misters in your yard. They use the nice ones for their common grounds and then you spend all that money and buy a house with them. Then they put the cheap crappy spray ones in your lawn. These are great. This is what you want. Huge winners. Way more efficient. Don't get affected by the wind. Better coverage. Big win. So that is good to go for those. That's what I thought those were, but I wanted to double check. More things you could uh, talk about or make a video about. Absolutely agree. I live in St. Cloud. Oh, I think I did a Walmart in St. Cloud. Are you close to Orlando? I think I used to do a Walmart in St. Cloud. Um, and I hated it because that's the hilliest place in the world. St. Cloud, my gosh, you would not even think you're in Florida. And that's what I'm thinking of, which I'm pretty sure if it's, I think it was about 40 minutes away from, it may not be Orlando, Kissimmee. I think it's about 40 minutes out of Kissimmee is St. Cloud and it's hilly. Man, that, don't like hills for spraying. That Walmart was a nightmare. Um, it seems to be pretty windy over here to struggle to get uh, correct coverage. Again, what we just talked about, that's exactly why you use those high efficiency heads um, because it's better for, uh, for winds. Especially at the easement. Yeah, easements are tough between sidewalk and roads. Uh, concrete gets very hot, hard to get coverage. People run over it, heads break. Um, those are tough areas. Speaking of which, and I should have taken pictures start to finish, I gave your video recommends for the bare spots with black cow and sand. Um, and a, sh a shot at the easement for an area that just went to crap and bare. It's going on one week since I put the soil down. So, uh... So time will tell. I really do need to get better at taking some before pictures, lol. So do I. All right, man, sorry this was long-winded. I know you're super busy. Look forward to more videos. Don't burn yourself out. I'm trying my best. Um, excited to see your guys' line of products uh, when you can get everything squared away. Uh, take care, sir, Brandon. Thank you, uh, uh, Brandon. 
Um, I appreciate that. I'm so, we're so excited about our product line, but where we're at with it right now is just out of our control. So I, I'm literally waiting. There's nothing I can do, um, and I'm very frustrated for it. Part of the reason, uh, you know, part of the reason why I stopped making videos and then also the YouTube striking me was the most ridiculous thing that's ever happened. But those two things combined kind of slowed me down. And then I'm very busy as well, so kind of slowed me down with making videos because I'm trying to push these product lines so, so, so hard. Um, but we're just at a point of out of my control, and it's just frustrating. But promise you and i'm doing everything in my capacity to get this going because like i said when i'm shopping and giving these advice for these products i wish they could be my products because i know exactly what these people need if i have to freaking shop around on all these random things so um youtube struck you yeah youtube strike two of my videos and i have a stay of a strike on my channel um for it. If you're talking one about nitrogen is dangerous content and one about mushrooms is da both da dangerous and hazardous content um, was what I got striked for. Uh, Claremont is super his hilly. Yeah. Was it Claremont? It might have been Claremont. I don't know. I did one, one Walmart. We used to do about 70 Walmarts. Um, and Walmart, of course, wasted all their money with us because they didn't follow the program and then we had to cancel them after a year. Um, but they wasted all their money, like most people, most most commercial accounts do. We tell them, you know, uh, hey, you have to stick with the program. You have to do the program right. If you miss or don't do it right, um, then it's not going to work well. You're a dangerous man, apparently. Yes. Apparently telling people about how to use nitrogen in their lawn is dangerous and also telling people about how mushrooms are beneficial in their lawn because that video is, both of those videos are no longer on YouTube, is also dangerous and hazardous content even though you can literally watch videos of how to grow magic mushrooms, use them and trip balls on them um, but I can't tell you that uh, mushrooms are beneficial in your lawn and they decompose and help feed your lawn. Apparently that's dangerous and hazardous, but uh, consuming mushrooms and going on a psychedelic trip uh, is not hazardous or dangerous. Again, I don't care what you do on your free time, but I just don't want to get striked for it. So I think that that's a pretty good run through there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a competitor who was just hating on you reporting. Um, actually, that is the conclusion that I've talked to several people who know YouTube and do more video, do more video stuff than I have. And the conclusion has been that it makes no sense why these videos were, were strike down um, other than somebody is hating, which I don't know why anybody would hate. I mean, I do these videos for free. I don't charge anybody. So I don't know what the hate is. Um, I'm not taking anyone's business because I, I mean, I'm not even offering a service. I'm just giving free advice. So maybe somebody wants to get, get paid advice. I don't know, but that unfortunately, because the conclusion a lot of people came to, but I'm very disappointed in YouTube because I, I asked them to, well, I clicked the manual review button and they both came back that they manually reviewed them and they agree that they are dangerous and hazardous content. Um, but the funny thing, the mushroom video is two minutes and 26 seconds long. And after I clicked the manual review button, one minute later, they sent me an email saying that they may only reviewed it and they disagree so somehow they watched a two minute 26 minute video in one minute and decided it, it, it doesn't it doesn't fit so um, unfortunately we think there's there's a hater but I guess that's how you know you're doing well um, you're not doing good unless you have haters so I guess um, that that is part of it but um, but also be and, and be patient with the, the black cow and stuff filling it in it's going to take time, man. Just be patient with it. Add more if it needed. I had the same issue with uh, UF healthcare centers. I can do my best to apply perfect tanks. But if you don't listen to me when it comes to water programs, what's the point? Yeah, Walmart, I'll tell you what. Uh, Walmart spent $200,000 with us in one year just for it to be wasted. The deal was to do six applications. And some of the stores got seven. And I told them. I warned them. I said, guys, you have to do this right. I must do the six and some of them seven applications in one year at these certain times. These services can't be late. These services can't be early. They're all complement each other. Your stores are a wreck. I need to do this to get your stores in shape. If we get this done, then we can lower applications and you can save money on the long run, but we got to suck it up for a year. They did four. 
out of our six, they did four to five out of our six to seven applications, okay? And then they came back at the end of the year. And, and by the way, they did some of them two to three months late. And I told them that you can't do that because we're putting in products that only last two months in the soil. So I'm complimenting everything. Then they came back a year later and said, well, the results really aren't what we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so uh, uh, we were like, well, yeah, you didn't follow our program. Um, and then we said, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it again, but we have to do a year deal. We do the six, we agree on the six treatments and we choose the time they're done and it's all agreed upon in advance. Um, we emailed three of the head up people. And by the way, this is, this is not Walmart. This is their management company. We emailed three of the top head people at the management facility telling them this. Not a single one even replied back to us, letting us know, hey, we're not interested. Hey, we don't want to do this. Not a single person at that facility company contacted us back so we canceled the insurance we canceled it and said we're not going to do any walmarts called us like six months later oh hey you want to do some walmarts for us no what no way get out of here and that's also i would i would do them in orlando i would do them at night and they would call us and want them want like 70 walmarts done in one week with one day notice and we and after we've been contacting them for a month in advance saying hey let's get this scheduled so dude these commercial centers are nightmares but hey the 200 grand was fine i i didn't mind it well actually you know what sucks we had to do so much investment into this i really didn't make much uh much money because the 200 grand made up for all the equipment i bought an f-250 bought a skid steer bought a kubota you know we, we and then we bought all the product we spent 160 170 grand and stuff so we finally just started making money and then walmart's like mom we don't know what we're doing. We're not going to respond to you and we're not going to say anything. So we, so we, and their insurance was $3,500 a month with how high their insurance had to be. But when you're doing 20 grand a month in Walmart, 3,500 a month in, 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 uh, in insurance isn't too bad. And we were getting more and more stores. It started low and started, you know, 10,000, 15, 20,000. Um, so, uh, falls back to a go-to statement. I just grow grass for a living. What do I know? Yeah, I had a lady one time, uh, customer. The, the husband was nice, but the wife, she said, how hard can it be? And I was like, well, ma'am, you hired me to take care of your lawn. If it's not that hard, you should do it. But yeah, that's what I told him. And I said, you know, you wasted 200 grand, whatever. You know, we sold the Kubota and we got the money from that. So, I mean, so we probably came out, you know, 50, 50 plus Gs from that. But just a huge waste. I hate, I told them, I said, if you don't do it right, you're going to waste your money. And they did. And it happens all the time with commercial accounts. Literally just throwing money away. And I can't stain it because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna half ass the job. We either do it right or we don't do it at all. It's the end of story. Because I'm not gonna half ass it because whether even if I'm putting money in my pocket, that's my reputation on the line. So I'm just jibber jabbering now. Um whew. Okay, I think we went every over well. Um I'm not sure if Brandon was able to join us here. Um, but Brandon, if you were able to join us, let me know if you have any more questions about what I went over um, or if anybody else. Um, we're about an hour and a half in. Um, I'm glad my cat's surprised my cat's not bothering me. So that's a big win. Maybe I'll get some some relaxing time. But let's see if anybody has any any questions or anything um, about whatever we went over. I can go back to pictures. I can go back to product. Whatever you guys want to go over, let me know. I'll hang around. Um, also, also, please like and subscribe. <laughs> so, um, if you're watching, uh, I would really appreciate a like on this video and a subscription to my channel. But I think everyone who usually consistently watches these already does all that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love. I'm working on my spring March video. It's just so hard to edit after these long days. Springtime's crazy, and we're, we're trying to hire people, and new employees aren't showing up to work, and it's just... Uh, and supply and demand chain is just a mess and it's just so frustrating in the day. So it's really hard. I love filming the videos. I have a hard time editing them just because I sit in front of a computer a lot and do phone calls and emails and then I come home and sit and edit. I love I love doing it. It's just it's just tough. So I'm working on it slowly but surely, getting a little bit of editing in here and there. Tomorrow is supposed to be a rain day. So I will be finishing that video tomorrow because i freaking owe it to you guys because you guys are so great from supporting me i owe you good content and i always appreciate it but please like subscribe 
comment, help my channel out. Thank you guys. I always appreciate it. And let's see if I have any more questions. Uh, for what it's worth, um, I've seen this man company's works firsthand, and they're on top of it. Look at that. First-hand encounter. Yeah, thank you. I hope uh, your neighbor's lawn is doing well. We're doing a yard across the street from uh, Rocket Man here. So so he gets to uh, see firsthand uh, on how our service is doing. And that yard was uh, a, a wreck. But hopefully the customer listens. But I think we, we can get it, to get, to get it together this year. He His yard won't be long. The backyard needs a little more TLC. But yeah, I tell everyone, you know, we... We don't we don't advertise anymore. We spread by word of mouth and let our good good reviews do do the work and do things like this. Thanks for all the great info chat. Of course, no problem. Thank you for the support. Uh, love love doing this. Love to be here. So, but yeah, if anyone um, else has any question. Rocket oh, man, you mean? Kim Jung, LOL. For what it's worth. You mean Kim Jung, LOL. I don't know what that means. I guess it wasn't directed at me, so maybe that's why I don't know what it means. But All right. It's been an hour and a half. I love doing this. This is so much fun. Um, guys, email me your questions, turforganics904 gmail.com, and this will be can be you next week. I will go over your emails, ask questions. Like it says, there's no email too long and there's no description too good. This one's short, but this was a very well description of what these people wanted. And they sent me wonderful pictures with them that I del didn't delete, but I exited out of that. But they sent me wonderful pictures with them. So guys, this can be you. Thank you for your support. I appreciate I appreciate it. Um, again, Feel free to reach out, ask questions, uh, like, subscribe, share, all, all the stuff that YouTubers say to do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone, have a great rest of your...